There's so much going on. Let's just get into it. Thousands of rideshare drivers protested across the country in demand of higher pay and better job security. I attended the strike yesterday along with Harry. He was in attendance and he shared his thoughts on the protest. Hey Cecily, thanks for uh, looping me in here. And yeah, you know, so I just attended the noon rally here at the Los Angeles uh, Uber and Lyft driver strike organized by Rideshare Drivers United. And there definitely, it was a solid turnout, probably one to 200 drivers, lots of organizers, lots of green shirts and lots of shirts. I saw people wearing this at Rideshare Drivers United, a bunch of media, um, you know, kind of the big local media and then a bunch of random media channels. And, you know, once the everything was done, they all went and did their little segments, lots of, you know, very passionate speeches and, uh, you know, sort of enthusiastic supporters I guess you would say which probably makes sense so talk to a lot of drivers that were here and I think for the most part you know obviously as you might imagine they're all fighting you know all the kind of recurring theme I think that I saw from drivers was that they want to be paid more and they want the commission on uber and Lyft to be capped so uh, you know they're gonna head on now to uh, do some more picketing at uh, the terminals but uh, we'll definitely we'll, we'll keep an eye on things and see how it goes because I know these protests were happening in cities all around the country overall the experience was really positive I had a great time meeting some of the drivers and organizers and had a word to share with you guys from one of the organizers of the protest. My name's Joss and I'm a uh, I'm one of the organizers for Rideshare Drivers United and we are uh, a grassroots organization of, of more than 4,000 drivers here in LA and uh, we were sort of the, the catalyst that sparked this movement that we've seen sweep across the nation and then across the globe of, of drivers who are who are fed up and who are standing up and, and finally, uh, you know, speaking out against these companies and uh, and you know their frankly exploitative apps that you know they've just pushed the the, uh, the limit on for over and over and over and they finally found that breaking point where drivers are fighting back. So uh, so yeah, we had this this 24-hour strike here in LA and then also we were doing a picket line at LAX. Um, pretty much all day too, like starting at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I would say it was a success. I would say it was a success even before we started, even okay. before midnight, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, a large part of the strategy, you know, we do want to affect Uber and Lyft financially somewhat, but I think, uh, you know, the primary goal and consideration was this is an informational campaign. We're mm -hmm. trying to, uh, you know, to get the word out there that A, the drivers are organizing, B, that drivers are getting screwed over because the passengers don't know that and also regulators don't have a full grasp on, you know, what the, the, the extent of the situation is. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, the, the, the news coverage as this thing went viral and, and went worldwide, uh, you know, that, start, that started a few days ago, you know, so... Um, so I think it was a success even just that we were, that we attempted something like this, mm -hmm. it already became a success. And then, uh, but then I would say, you know, on its own merits, the, the picket, the picket today and the strike were, were a success too, or as much as a, of a success as you can hope for a fledgling organization that, you know, we haven't taken over the city yet. We're just kind of getting started, you know? <laughs> Since we're talking about money and driving and all that kind of stuff, I thought it'd be good to share a graph that I saw in the Business Insider that talked about how much rideshare drivers make. Now, I know a lot of you guys are in different parts of the country, and if you hear about, especially folks here on the West Coast, Los Angeles, <laughs> the Bay Area, you know that we make different types of money than possibly folks that are in the Midwest or other places, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, long story short, I wanted to call out to you the highest paid areas for rideshare drivers. This makes a lot more sense when you look at it from this vantage point. You're not gonna make the same amount of money if you're in a smaller metropolitan area. So that list being at the top, of course, is San Francisco, New York, San Jose, Seattle, Los Angeles. We're not that high up on the list, guys. Um, Chicago, Portland, D uh, Denver, Las Vegas, San Diego, Madison, Wisconsin. What's going on out there? Bridgeport, Connecticut, New Orleans, Austin, and Dallas, Texas are the top 15. So if you're not driving in those areas, then you might have to work a little bit harder. Or you have a corner on the market and it's all green, baby. I just wanted to call this stuff out because I think it's important to assess how much money you make, not only by the car you have, the fuel economy, maintenance, and all that kind of stuff, but where you drive. You're not gonna make a ton of money if you're in a place that people don't use rideshare. If you guys wanna see a link to that article, the link is in the description. 
Company officials in Oregon use data from rideshare companies to find riders who may have been exposed to measles. So last summer, two cases of measles were reported in Oregon, and both of these people have reported to use rideshare. Local and state public health officials reached out to Uber and Lyft to obtain the information to find out who may have been in the car, who were the drivers on that particular day. Uber released the information just fine, but Lyft actually requested a letter demonstrating the authority to request such information. So one of the drivers who was improperly immunized was told to monitor himself and literally was deactivated because he was deemed a health risk. So while this happened last summer, this topic came up recently because investigators are talking about the spread of measles and other diseases. There's so many people that get in your car you could very well be spreading diseases with your vehicle. I've given thought to this. I was like, if there's an apocalypse, who's gonna live? Probably the rideshare drivers because they've been exposed to so many germs, you know what I mean? <laughs> According to the CDC, the measles virus can stay infectious in the air up to two hours after someone sneezes or coughs. It is highly infectious. And with over 700 cases on the rise, measles, as you know, is one of those things that is coming back. So if you're not immunized, get immunized. If you don't believe in immunization, pray to Jesus, pray, pray to whoever that you don't get sick. If you guys wanna see a link to that article, the link is in the description. And finally, for our last segment, the what would you do story. A rideshare driver looked in her back seat and saw what appeared to be a little teeny tiny bag of baking soda. Sure, <laughs> baking soda is being sold in teeny tiny bags as big. Y'all know this is not baking soda. She found this bag and reported it to Uber and is waiting for the owner to contact her. Let me know in the comments what you would do or the proper thing to do. Why don't we do that? Why don't we say, what's the proper thing to do in this case? Personally, I think I would let everybody know it's not mine. Police, Uber, everybody. And then I would be afraid to throw it out on the street. I'd be afraid to put it in the garbage. I would be nervous as hell. Let me know in the comments what you would, okay, not what you would do. The proper thing to do in this case for your fellow brethren and sisterin. And like always, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any tips, any cool stories, anything, any what would you do's, let me know in the comments as well. If you're not following this channel, this is the Rideshare Guys channel. Harry is amazing and he offers a bevy of content and information by a bunch of contributors cool stuff cool stuff if you're curious about who i am my name is cecily and i have a channel called drive girl drive where i talk about rideshare gig economy and entrepreneurship it's been a great week i hope you guys have an awesome weekend and i'll see you next week